Okay, well, thank you, and uh, uh, thanks for having me. I think uh, we've been coming to this meeting, actually, since early on. Um, so I want to tell my name, Stuart Pelt, and I want to tell you about uh, PTC. Uh, as you heard, we're also a public company, so we will be making some forward-looking statements. So uh, PTC, we were uh, founded in 1998, really trying to leverage the biology, RNA biology, to treat uh, rare and neglected uh, diseases. And that's really been our mantra since the beginning. Um, and so uh, early on, our first product is Translarna uh, Adalorin for the treatment of diseases due to a uh, non-cess mutation. And uh, this could be used for a subset of patients. And we went around uh, the groups to ask what drug, what, um, indications we should work on and we met Pat and we fell in love and we've been working with this group now well for well over 12 years uh, and it's been really quite so we're really passionate about this and we really um, have spent a considerable amount of time to help not only move Translarna forward but also the understanding of how to move DMD drugs forward I think so uh, we've been really part of this and you've heard that Really, uh, getting drugs approved is a, a relatively arduous process, and that's not surprising when you think about um, you know, the, as I always say, the evolution uh, has had millions of years to be capable of, of, of building who we are today. And so being able to get drugs to actually alter that process is not an easy thing. And so uh, it's a long process in which, as you've heard, you have to discover uh, either the products, the, either the therapeutics, and then you have to show that it works in safety toxicology that you've heard, and then go through the clinical and regulatory approval. And that's uh, in part really the process. And then once you're there, uh, you have to consider patient access. How do you then bring the drug to the patient? And we've been working on this process now, uh, working with Translarna to move forward uh, for over really 17 years now. And I think when this is really, in a sense, our history, but also I think it really is somewhat the history of how pioneering it is to bring a drug uh, to a new therapeutic area. And if you think about uh, Adalorin or Translarna, it's, uh, it was a new chemical entity, it's a small molecule, uh, with a new mechanism of action in a new therapeutic area. And we have to remember that in Duchenne, muscular dystrophy. There was never really a, a drug that's been approved through the regulatory processes before. So uh, when you think about what we need to do as a community, um, it really requires an, an incredible amount of innovation in order to move it forward in a number of ways. And I think this timeline really, in a sense, tells a lot of the history of what we've been trying to do. And we as a community is what I'm talking about. PTC as well as uh, the investigators and uh, the patients as well, the advocacy groups as well as the regulators. So you can see it has really been a team sport. You can see just really just identifying the drug took us uh, five years. As I said, we started in 1998 and the drug uh, Translarna Adalorin was picked in uh, five years later, in which we then had to do safety toxicology and then clinic phase one trials that you heard about. And then we did do a proof of concept study showing that uh, in patients you can make dystrophin. But you get to a point where you then have to demonstrate proof of, of, of uh, clinical benefit. And we had talked to uh, both the FDA and the EMA at that time, and it was clear to us that you needed to figure out uh, a means to demonstrate clinical benefit. And so uh, since there had never been identified previously of an outcome measure, we had to work with the community to help uh, define that. And we worked, uh, we chose the six minute walk test as that because it was a good, we thought not only a good predictor of how kids are walking, and that's a clearly important point, but um, it's been used in other trials and it's a, it's a good predictor of overall about how, how the patient is doing. Uh, and it's been used in, it has been used and approved by other, uh, for other drugs. Um, but in, in a lot of ways, you're also picking it, but as you heard, you need to understand not just having a reliable assay, but you need also to understand the natural history. And so I think what's very common in, in these types of 
uh, in, in orphan drugs where there's never been a drug approved, in a way you're building the plane while you're flying it. You're understanding the natural history of the disease so that you can then determine, because ultimately you have to have what's an outcome measure. It's something that says, is the drug effective or not? And so we were building and we had to learn that. And this trial was important because we think not only did it demonstrate that translander adalarin was active, but it also really helped to find the natural history of how patients change over the course of time. And that was the first uh, trial that was done so. And if you think about um, the natural history publications that came out subsequent to that, well, we started planning the trial in 2007. It wasn't really to 2010 or 11 that there were um, other subsequent natural history papers. And also, it wasn't later on till we really got both draft guidelines from the EMA and most recently with the parent project for the FDA. So you can see um, it takes um, quite a bit of effort and to be able to define how to demonstrate a drug uh, shows efficacy. And so we have been doing that, and we're happy to uh, have reported a couple of years ago that we, we got approval for Translarna in Europe. The EMA approved it. And then we're now doing a trial now to get it approved in the United States and the rest of the world. Uh, and really, if you think about it, um, we understand that this is, in a sense, that the plot of the natural history was the first one that Craig uh, McDonald had done um, uh, with the community to show the differences of how the changing of how uh, uh, healthy patients versus DMD boys and, and young men walk, and you could see there's such a clear difference. And we understand that we need drugs to alter the course of this disease, to change how, how uh, rapidly they change in terms of walking ability. And so um, we're very pleased that we were able, uh, through the Phase 2B study, to get the, the approval to, uh, for Translarna in Europe. And I think this was incredibly important. It's the first ever drug that has gotten an approval uh, uh, in Europe for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And I think it's important not only uh, for, for, for uh, nonsense mutation patients, but I think also for the community because it helped define a pathway in which drugs have the potential to get approved. So I think this, and that the first step. <clears throat> yeah. So I think this is, you know, this really is a moment to, to be excited about because it's the, the first step in the process uh, of being able to do so. And so, and I think it was really quite interesting. We had met um, some of the regulators where they had actually published a paper uh, ask, you know, about why they approved uh, uh, Translarna, for, uh, why the EMA approved it. And when we were talking with them, it was really quite interesting. They said, well, you know, it's really quite w rare to find, like I said, a new drug with a new chemical entity, a new mechanism of action in a new therapeutic area. And we don't get that very often. And so we wanted to write why we got the approval. So we were really quite excited about that. And I think it is a testament to this community to have been able to do that. So that's the first step. We have an ongoing study now that we uh, hope will be, uh, will be completed by the end of this year that we hope will then allow us to get on the uh, track for approval in the U United States and, uh, uh, and the rest of the world. Uh, and as you heard from Ed, uh, it's a multi-stage uh, process that, uh, and we, we plan to have this trial completed uh, by, um, within the fourth quarter of this year. And as you heard, it's that's the first step of the process. We then have to uh, complete the submission, uh, uh, finalize the submission, have it submitted, and then reviewed by the FDA, of which you then can, uh, where they will review it, and there's potential, as you heard, uh, advisory committees. So those are the steps for the approval. And that's how then you are, have the, on success, you have the right to you know, be able to commercialize or bring the product to patients. And through that process, that's just that's the regulatory step. But there's a whole bunch of other things that uh, we're doing as well within the process of, of getting ready to be able to bring drug to patients on, on expectations of success. And so when you think when you have to bring drug 
to a patient, there's a number of things you have to obviously make it, package it, bring it, be able to distribute it to the, to the right places, be able to handle the insurance, and co-pays uh, help both the physicians as well as the, um, p- uh, the families to get through this process so that um, you bring drugs to patients. And so that process is now, um, we've built this in Europe and we're in the process of building all this in the United States. And um, there's, we've really uh, brought together a strong team that are now building the processes in the United States. It's led by Eric Paul, who has a, a lot of experience in the orphan drug space. And there's the team of folks uh, that we brought as well to, in order to uh, help bring uh, translarners t- to patients. So uh, it's really, they're actually going to be, I think most of them are here today, and there'll be a whole bunch more. Uh, and so please make sure you get to, to meet them because they're, they're very interested in talking to anyone and explaining what the processes are. So I think, um, as I said, it's been a 17-year a journey, and it... Um, I feel very privileged to be both part of this community and really had the, um, to be able to come from founding the company to an idea to be able to uh, really go through the whole process. And I think um, through that, we, we always say that uh, PTC is as much as a cause as a company, and that's part from being so close to, to the patients. And so uh, we, 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 we really made a strong commitment um, to that, and then as such, as you could see, we've we, we've always we've kept all patients uh, who have been on clinical trials on drug. We have over 900 years of, of patient patient years of giving translarna. 400 patients are currently uh, on drug now, both ambulatory and non-ambulatory uh, patients on the extension programs. We've also we realized the stress that can be placed if there's uh, two boys in the family who have uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and if one is on uh, trial and one isn't, the stress that can bring. And so we built a siblings program so that patients, uh, that brothers of patients who are on clinical trials, but we're, who are but the brother is not, have a means to be able to obtain uh, translarna. So that's another program that I think that we hope relieves some stress for patients. Um, we've also built, um, we think it's important to help build the community, so we've built a, a grant program for advocacy groups both here as well as around the world to help help in multiple causes that advocacy groups are doing. So there's a, a, a actually a fairly large number of grants that have been coming in, come in that will be given in September on uh, the Shen Awareness Day. So we think that's an important point to give to the community. The other point is, I think, is that we um, are still continually to be very strongly involved in DMD research. We have a pediatric program, so we studied uh, DMD patients five years and greater. We're planning to do uh, more work for the younger patients as well. Uh, We've also recently built a registry program that's uh, been initiated in Europe that we anticipate upon success in the U.S. that will also be expanded. So the registry programs are programs where, you know, since this is a a new drug and you want to learn the long-term effects of what a drug does for patients, um, you want to continue to uh, accrue data even after the uh, approval process. So that program has already been initiated and is ongoing. Um, and then we also have a number of uh, discovery programs, and this are earlier stage programs in which we are uh, continually against a number of targets that we hope can bring additional drugs to the Duchenne the community. And I think also we're looking for ways and exploring uh, with advocacy groups means to uh, do to make sure that everyone's genetically tested. And obviously, um, you know, we're in this era now of precision-based medicine where it's not sufficient to just say that you're a Duchenne muscular dystrophy patient. You have to know the precise 
makeup of it. You can have, in the case for translarna, due to nonsense mutations, as you heard from Ed, if you have exon deletions, there could be other drugs that could be potentially available, and therefore you need to know not only that you have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, but the genotype. And we think that we need to make sure, one of the things is, part of this is to make sure all patients have been genotyped. And so, um, I guess what we want, really want to do is today is thank you for the partnership. It's been um, an incredible journey over the last 17 years. Um, and that obviously I think a lot of progress has been made. And I think a, uh, in part a path at least has been initiated and developed so that other drugs. So I think even if Translarna isn't for your, for your DMD patient or boy or adult, the point is it's actually helped, I think, because it's helped to find a path for other drugs in which can be followed. And I think uh, we've obviously got it approved uh, in Europe. We're going to continue the trial to, uh, the, a second trial is on its way to being completion. Uh, with Upon success will then allow us in the U.S. So I think there's a lot of exciting things that are going to go on hopefully in the next year. And that I think we're putting together a number of, of programs and support to make sure that the healthcare providers, the patients, are well of what we're doing. So I think the take-home lesson I also wanted to make is, I think it's very important, and probably this, this group knows it quite well, that you need to know your genotype. But we really got to make sure, because that's going to be fundamental to making sure that patients have the opportunity to get the right drug at the right time. So with that, uh, let me thank you. And uh, this is, we, if you need any more information, uh, about Translana or DMD, uh, you can go there. So thanks for your attention.